Because I'm not going to call on Do people. Do I have to We're stand back here? If, um, so am I. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, if you could, Nick, if you don't mind. I'm good. And there, and there is cold something in Cold something in that uh, okay. advertisement bottle. What is that? <laughs> it's a, I don't know what it's It's called. a zero, oh. zero or something, non-sugar. Conversation with Mick, so just feel free to ask him questions. Mickey, uh, what are your impressions, first of all, of the early enrollees, uh, specifically the wide receivers? Um, well, first off, you're talking about the largest mid year group that I've ever been involved with. So that's a lot of years and a lot of guys. So, number one, from a, from a size standpoint, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, from a togetherness, like, like serious standpoint, like these guys are ready. Like they came mentally ready for what's coming. They came focused. They're into it. They're. It's a really good group. We just had a meeting, and everybody in our department talked about how well the freshmen were doing. Just you know, taking care of their business. Um, the wideouts. I mean, obviously you have those four guys. They're all different. You've got the you got Mookie, who's 195 pound boat up guy. That's kind of a quick guy. Then you got G, who's kind of like Austin Mackish. Then you got Julian, and uh, and then you got Jackson. So they're all different. They've been great. Um, I love their work ethic. I love their focus so far. We've separated them just because it's such a big group. So we'll separate them all the way until the end of January, and then we'll start integrating them with the other guys. You mean separate as the wide receivers group? No, separate, separate them as the mid-year freshman group. Oh, I see. Because they're on a different plan. Like their fitness levels aren't with what sure. the other guys are. Can um, in terms of those receivers, obviously you haven't seen them on the field yet, mm -hmm. but can you get a, a sense of just, I mean, they're the most touted group in God knows how long, of just what they could become? Um, I think they could be as good as they want to be, um, but the receivers that have been here in the past have put in an ornate amount of work in to get to where they were. If you look at Terry McLaren, just if they do that and they follow, they follow the culture that has been built in that room, you know, hopefully they haven't put pads on yet, at least at, at here. So we'll see. But just focus so far and all that, you hope. I mean, they have to be. Nick, how much uh, conversation is there when they, these guys work out and you have the whole team about that game, the way the season ended? Is that a big – you guys use that as motivation? How much is no that? No doubt. There's a sign in the weight room. What's it say? Whatever the score was. Okay. In your experience, when you've had these kinds of – I don't know, tough losses or you know, things that you want to use as catchphrases. How effective can those be? And how they can be as effective as you want them to be based on what kind of team you have. So the good thing is the quarterback's back, and he's, like, he's completely different than he was 365 days ago because of what he did and falling short. So, Was there any thought for you about uh, – the wound is so fresh, maybe let's not talk about it right away. Or do you prefer to throw it right at him? Throw it right at him. How it's real. <laughs> how, how is the quarterback different? I mean, explain what you, what you mean. from. A well, day. I think like last year when he showed up, uh, he was quiet. He was trying to fit in. He was trying to find the nutrition room. He was trying to find his classes. He wasn't sure about the workout. He didn't know who his buddies were. It's cold. Everything. I mean, he didn't know anybody. Now, all of a sudden, he's the starting quarterback. Um, he's earned a reputation of being a hard worker. Uh, he knows he's the leader now. Uh, he knows what needs to be done. He has a whole different mindset of, his off, of the offense and where that needs to go. Um, he knows that he has to do a great job with those young receivers. Um, so, to me, it's, like, completely different. Is, is, uh, is he restricted right now from, a, you know? None, zero. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised to see that, or I mean, are, are, did y'all expect that? I mean, um, I expect it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing, Mick, what, what, do, you, do you during this time do you have specific position group stuff that y'all do from a, you know, quarterbacks' arms getting stronger, things like that? I mean, and how does it specifically uh, pertain to the quarterbacks? What's um, some, some generally? What do y'all do? I think right now is kind of a, a general time, just general fitness, get getting them back into you know strength training and running and flexibility and mobility. But what we do is we break down two ways. So what I do is I look at the team that just left or the, the team prior, 
And then you look at what you have coming back, and then you look at you look at the team building, um, like how what, what we need to do for the team. Like last year was completely different. 2016 was different. 14 was different. So they're all different from a team standpoint. And then you break down each individual of what their needs are. So um, somebody needs to get stronger. Somebody needs to get in better shape. Someone needs to gain weight. Someone needs to be a better leader. Someone needs to be uh, disciplined better. Someone needs to uh, eat better. And they all have those individual goals. And what we did this year was a little different is we gave them like a six-question um, self-evaluation project where they had a list. Number one was what motivates them. Not what, what, not what we want them to be motivated by, but what motivates them. So, for example, um, let's use Jeremy Ruckert. Jeremy Ruckert, what motivates me? What's, what, what is the question? He lists whatever that is. The next one was give me three goals of the offseason for you that you have. Your goals could be get a better GPA. It could be be a better teammate. It could be going to bed early, whatever it is. And then a couple other questions pertaining to, like, what, what your unit can expect from you, what your teammates can expect from you. Um, and then what we did was we put them in a the locker room, on the lockers, so everybody can see everybody's goals. So if someone needs help, then a leader grabs them and says, you're not, you're not, this isn't your goal. You're not doing it. So it's kind of cool. Or they need help, whatever it is. So we're trying to be very transparent more than we've ever been. We're trying to, like, help each other. If somebody does something right or wrong, we're calling it out. We're teaching them. I mean, it's – I'm just trying to make it as focused and as focused as they can be. Since you mentioned the mental preparedness of the, of the early enrollees, have you seen a difference in their physical preparedness coming in as opposed to previous – It varies. It varies. You got guys like – uh, you got guys like Paris Johnson who, you know, he's been training at a level since he was in eighth grade differently than, you know, one of the other linemen. It's just all different. I tried to figure that out years ago. You can't. Like, it's just – I'll tell you what. When kids that come from the state of Texas, they, they've got a pretty good development. Here's what I see. The state of Ohio, state of Texas, there's actually strength programs that they – does that make sense? Yeah. Have you had to restrict him at all? Oh, good. Nick, uh, yep. Do you have players who you guys recruit them? Maybe they're a linebacker, but there's some thought that perhaps down the line he could get bigger and become a defensive end, something like that. How does your staff factor into that? How much back and forth is there about how guys are changing and ultimately, like, the decisions when a guy does make a position switch? Like, how much are you involved in that? Uh, involved very heavily. Um, I think what we do is just naturally see what happens because you can't stop, like, you can't stop nature. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just guys gaining weight just because their bodies are maturing and they're getting, you know, just getting bigger because if there's a guy like, you know, if you have uh, – Javante Jean Baptiste is a perfect example. When he was recruited on his recruiting trip, he weighed 195 pounds when he stood on a scale. Like, I don't know about you, but – you can't play a defensive end in the Big Ten at 195 pounds. He was a guy that reminded me when I was at Cincinnati, those are the kind of guys, you just development guys, right? Well, Javante, uh, Javante right now weighs 248 pounds. So over a period of two years, we knew that his frame would be able to put that weight on. Um, and when there's a position change, like a DB going to linebacker, linebacker going, that just happens kind of naturally, naturally, and you just see what, you know, where your needs are and if they can do it or not. Are you and the coaches usually on the same page with that? Or are there times where you'll look at a guy and you'll see maybe you because you have a better eye for it that, that that's what that, that's what's going to happen with that guy? Yeah, they, they lean on me a lot just from the experience because I always got a player like not, he reminds me of this guy. Not, he reminds me of this guy. Um, but sometimes they'll be like, well, we want to keep him outside. We want to keep him a guard. We want to keep him here. And then we work together and just make sure that the plan is on point of where, where we want him. How did it go with a guy like uh, Kate Stover, for instance? With I think he was recruited. Most of them would have thought he was a linebacker. Now it sounds like he's going to play defensive end. Like, was that in your mind the plan all along? Or yeah, I mean, he's not? six foot four, or whatever. He's two hundred and twenty-five pounds. When he gets here, you know, you could just see his bones and his like. He's probably going to get big, but you never, you never say they can't until you just let the season play out and you know, just let see what happens. I'm curious, uh, Coach, uh, yeah. from. A month-by-month month standpoint all the way to August 1st, 
what are the things that you guys are focusing on as you mentioned a minute ago what you're working on now obviously you have a month in there we have spring practice mm -hmm. just what what are the things that you guys focus on in a month by month so that's a great question so like right now in january we've got it's it's general training but we got them in three groups we have the developmental group which would be like freshmen and sophomore guys that don't have a whole lot of reps that they played on a field. You have your advanced group, so your Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, uh, Jonathan Cooper, guys that have played a lot of ball here. So their bodies are, they've taken a lot of hits. So we got to train them at a different pace. And then you got your new guys, which are your 15 mid-years. Um, so they all have different needs, especially the first three weeks. And then we start integrating them. The month of February is kind of the month that like we hold our hat on around here. Like that's when we, it's dark and it's early and it's hard and it's adverse and it's uh, everything that you want out of it. Month of uh, March, you got spring ball, but it's, it's per, I call it perpetual development. From the time they walk in that door for the, from the first day to the time they leave and go to play in a senior bowl, it's perpetual development. You're trying to get better every day you're in here, every month, every, you know, every year as you go through. Nick, uh Coaches always talk about your input, Urban and now Ryan. You know, after the playoff and you engage with these guys again, was there some slant or take or edge that you brought to the table that you're trying to uh, get across to them in this period? Um, there's always something. Uh, but I always, you know, I, I do it from a specific standpoint and a general standpoint. Obviously, every winner – it's, it's about development. It's like, what is the off season for? It's not to, you know, whatever. It's not for that. It's not for this. It's for development. It's for individual development. So that takes precedent over everything. And then as you slowly, because it's, it's, it's a new team. Every team's different. That's why I love doing this is because January is different every year. And it just, you, you figure out about your team. And then you find out the strengths and the weaknesses. And then you look back to see, okay, what, did you, what, what happened last year? And how can we either enhance that or change that and just slowly build that thing when it comes to, you know, when, you know, we used to do the keys and all that stuff with Urban, but you now it's just, here's the team, let's rock and roll. Because now it's different. The rules are different. Coaches are allowed to be involved in actual drill work and, and conditioning in the summer, which has been great. Um, and we've been focusing more on that as, as, more, as, as well as just general stuff. Do you ever look? Look at the guys and just say, yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. This is a great group. This is 10 and 2. This is 12 and 0. This is, look at the talent. And yeah, you know, you can. You can. What, yep. are you, what are you seeing right now? Oh, way too early. Way too early to tell. <laughs> Nick, way too early. Nick, with the leaders that, that you lost <clears throat> off that team last year, um, I don't know that it would be a concern for you that you'd be able to replace it, but how long does it take until you can kind of get a feel for these are going to be, guys we think are going to be captains in August. It, it, it almost happens, like, naturally. Like, the leaders last year emerged naturally. Like, obviously, we're promoting leadership all the time, and, and, and really it's being a great teammate more than anything else. But it just kind of happens, and you just kind of see how it goes, and it just keeps rolling. And then you're seeing guys like Jeff Okuda, who had merged. You know, in August, he wasn't a leader. He was just a really good player that's playing corner, that's fired up because he's got a new coach, and he's ready to rock and roll, and we got new defense, whatever, you know. All of a sudden, as the season starts rolling, the kid starts changing now. You know what I mean? Like, but here's a for example. You look back last year, and right now, mid January, J.K. Dobbins had a whole different look on his face. Now he looked like, you know, he looked like Robert Conrad. Remember the commercial, <laughs> knocked the battery off. He looked like chip on his shoulder, a little chicken hot guy on uh, Bugs Bunny. Like you could tell right away that he had a chip on his shoulder. And it's going to be different, and it was. So you could tell with some guys. Just so are you seeing chips right now? I mean, uh, too early to tell. <laughs> 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 well, it was January last year, too, right? Yeah, it was. I'm trying to think who we got. Um, Nick, is Marcus Crowley going to be okay for spring? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Yeah. What about Cameron Babb? Um, he's participating on in all training. So he looks he's yep. good to go. What's it been like just keeping his spirits up? Great kid. He's been a great kid. I mean, great person, great, great worker, great teammate. He's so positive. It's been awesome. I mean, he's, he's best of the best. Speaking of positivity, have you seen Kerry yet? Oh, yeah. He was there first thing in the morning. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think about that? 
return. Oh, it's awesome. We love him. What does he bring? He brings an energy level, like, just, you know, he's in there 5.30 in the morning lifting weights, drinking his coffee, you know, being around the bush, talking to everybody, lifting weights, just just energizer bunny. He'll bring, he'll bring that, you know, I mean, you guys know what he is. What do you think he'll bring, though, having been in the league now? I mean, you know, what, 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 what does that do, you think, for – I think it does a lot. I think it does a lot for um, the experience level. I think it brings a lot for, like, you know, instant cred- – I shouldn't say instant credibility, but a little bit more credibility because he's seen that side. Because most of these kids want to, get to that, want to get to that level. Now he's seen it, so he's just putting more tools in his toolbox. And that, that's, a, that's a big hammer. That he's got now. How big of a replacement was it uh, for you, for example, with Phil moving on? Yeah. To, uh, I mean, everybody looks at the coaching staff and they see where guys get replaced. Yeah. But don't pay as much attention sometimes to your staff and stuff. Yeah, well, one of my, um, I guess, philosophies are the guys that come work, at least in the weight room as an assistant strength coach, they, ha- they have to have am- ambition to be a director or a head strength coach or they won't continue to grow. I don't want someone just kind of hang- hanging out. So they're always doing that. And then part of my job is to help develop those guys so when it's their time, when they're able to go, when they have that opportunity, they're ready to rock and roll. So we've had some go here and leave here and, and do a great job. Who have you replaced him with? Uh, we haven't yet. Yeah, we yeah. We're in a process. Yeah. Uh, Mickey, uh, every year when the freshmen, the early enrollees come in, it's a shock to their system. They, they probably are told <laughs> what's going to happen, but yeah. until you experience it, you can't know. How has this group responded to that compared to, to others? And – I want to ask you also about the quarterbacks, the new quarterbacks. Yeah, they um, – I don't want to say they're better because there's just more of them. And it's like – I don't want to say misery loves company, but – because it's not, it's not awful. It's good. It's great. They're, they're really fired up. I just think it's easier when a bigger group. When there's three guys, that's, that's a bad deal. Like, there's only three guys. They, they can't – there's nowhere for them to go. But this big group, they're, they're always together. They're always pushing each other. Because in that big group, you have a more of a chance to have positive leadership early on than you do if you have three guys. So guys that have positive leadership, like I, we have a meeting every, every January and it's kind of my, it's my favorite day, my second favorite day of the year. First is Matt drills and it's this, more so than football games and championship games. It's, it's the meeting because now you have a new team and you almost kind of hit, hit restart. You hit control, alt, delete, start over, blank sheet of paper and you really map out what the next seven, eight weeks are going to be about and how you can change and how you can improve and how you can enhance and what you need to do to – and in that meeting, it, it's hard, like like it's, it's like an Academy Award winning, you know, deal for me. Like it's the biggest thing ever. And the first time I've had two or three guys come up to me say, that was the best meeting I've ever heard. I can't wait to go. Most of the time freshmen are like, uh-oh, like this is <laughs> – hard so we had a couple guys right away Julian Fleming and G Scott that was the best meeting ever I can't wait and they so we'll see in mid-February when I mean Julian is I mean obviously the top rated recruit what, what are your impressions of him so far um obviously he's talented um so far so good uh, and the quarterbacks CJ and Jack yeah they're they good they're they're once again they're they're hungry like you could see you could see him being hungry and just trying because they got to improve in some things physically. And you could see them, you know, at least the vision of, I got to get there, I got to get there. Because you see Justin Fields, like, it's, it's probably not fair to see a six foot, three and a half, 230 pound, like, athlete like Justin that loves to lift weights. So. I would imagine it would help their development knowing that there's a real chance to be the backup. I mean, that, that's. Yeah, you, you think. They better be. Mickey, with the, how far had Jonathan Cooper come? He was so ready for last season going up to August. And what did you see from him that made you think last year could have been something special for him? And, and what that's does this the mean that he gets another this, year? Like, yeah, that's the hard part of this, man. He had, you know, he had that look in his eye. He was, you know, was going to be a cap, He was a captain. Even, even injured, he was a captain. You just that's the worst part of this job when it was because you see like you guys don't see him every day even the football coaches don't see him every day like the football trainer the athletic trainers the nutritionist and the strength coaches see him every single day and you see what they put in you see how much time and effort and you see how much they sacrifice and dedication all those things you see it every day and and he is such a he is such an outgoing positive energized juiced up leader i mean it's he's so i mean you you want to be around him and then you see when that happens, it's awful. 
But then you've seen another spark. He's like, okay, once he figured out like where his future was, I'm coming back, I'm doing. And now he's like, it's almost like, relax, give me something extra. Give me something, relax, slow down. So it's cool. Nick, what's, your, what's your advantage of having a guy like Tuck in the weight room uh, every day, just being like a potential three-time captain on the defensive side? Because I know you just had a guy like JT there, but with the three-time captain. But to have a defensive guy as a potential. You know, yeah, you need, you need that guy. You just need him. He's the, he's the most dependable. He's one of the most dependable players I've ever been around in 30 years. Um, and when it gets hard, it's easy. Like, when it's easy, it's great. But when it starts getting hard and starts getting into that week five, six, seven, where you're really grinding, you need leadership like that. And the younger players know that they can have somebody to lean on and somebody to look back and say, hey, how, how do you get through this? Or what should I do? Or, you know, and, and he's, he's the epitome of what a – collegiate athlete is in terms of preparation and training and he wants to be a strength coach so obviously he knows what he's doing. You said that some of those things come naturally but for him did, was it just you know a progression or was it a natural? It was a progression. Was it wasn't natural for him. It was hard. It's hard. Being a leader is hard because people say well he's, he's a vocal leader. To me there's no such thing. If you're going to be a leader you got to have all three qualities. You got to be seen, you got to be felt, and you got to be heard. If you don't have those three you're not a leader. Like don't well he like when the NFL scouts come in, well, he's, how does he lead? Vocally? I'm like, what is, I don't know what that means. Does he do the other two? Then and if he's vocal, yes, then he's a leader. But anybody can cheerlead. That doesn't mean you're a leader. Just, yeah, let's go, let's go. Like, you got to be seen, felt, and heard all at the same time. That's what a leader does. That's what Justin's got to do. That's what some of these players, now Chris, Chris Alave now all of a sudden is the leader. To, he, let's go. Like, you got to be seen, felt, and heard. So, that's what we're trying to teach them through this time now because if they get it here in the next eight weeks, they'll take that through spring ball, they'll take that through summer training, take it through August, and then hopefully they're ready to rock and roll in the season. So, Did you, yeah. did you see the J.K. Dobbins attitude yes. change other people? I mean, I mean It did, but see, like, like J.K., for example, um, great worker, great dude, great teammate, but he really wasn't that good of a leader because he wasn't – he was heard because he's – outgoing but he wasn't felt he wasn't seen he was but he wasn't so we 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 worked on those over the summer for him to be a better leader yes individually he's ready to you know he has a chip but if everybody can lead each other and everybody can follow each other and everybody can be a great teammate for each other then as you, remember I said you got two things you got the personal development of each player and then you got the team building aspect of it and we kind of do it simultaneously and then once the coaches get off the road and we start getting into our mat drills and our training and our, and our um, uh, conditioning sessions as a team, things really start. And then as a, as a coaching staff, you start talking about how we, can, you know, how we can help this group or how we can help this group or what this guy needs. And then you really start talking. Because you don't know until you, you're in it. Like everybody signs up to be like – everybody signs, yep, I want to do this. And then once they figure out what it is, like, whoa, this, is, this isn't what I signed up for. So as you go, then you know who. Does that make sense? You're obviously not on the field with, with the DBs, but that's the group that's going to be a lot of attention on because they lost three players. What are your impressions of, of those guys, the younger guys? That can't yeah, they got a lot of work to do. There's no doubt. They got a lot of work to do. The young guys don't know. It's, it's you know, obviously Sean Wade's back. He knows what he's got. He knows. We've, we, I, I sit down with every player that week that they got back from school, every player, and we talk about goals, and we talk about how you can help the team, we could talk about what your value is, what you need to do this offseason. We write it down. We have objective goals. We have the subjective goals, and we talk about all different things, and they have – this is big, it's a big winner for them. They have to. Obviously, now Kerry's back, and he recruited a lot of these guys, so, you know, hopefully there's a connection already, but, again, it goes – it's every day. It's – you're here. You need to get there. You, it's not going to be a straight line. It's not going up and across. It's not going to go down and across. It's going to be like this. It's going to be peaks and valleys every day because you're talking about 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old young men that think they know. Some do, some don't, and they're just growing. And that's the really, that's the really uh, fulfilling part of my job. It's not just the lifting and the running and all the physical stuff. It's that mental just see that mental and emotional development that they make over a period of time, which is ridiculous. I mean, you can just go back since since we've been here, I've been here. It's 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 crazy to see the development. From what you've seen of those guys, 
how likely is it that they're going to rise to the account, rise to the occasion? Well, again, I'm a history guy, so you learn from history or you're condemned to repeat it. So we've had that same thing in 16 where those young guys had to step up. So hopefully they're going to repeat what the, the guys in 16 did. You know, when we lost all that, that one group and that other group stood up like, whoa, where these guys come from? So I'm, 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 I'm leaning on history and uh, controllable factors, controllable factors of how we control what they do, how they do it, where they do it, when they do it, and then they control those things. We talk about just, you know, being a tough guy isn't being a bully or being a physical guy that pushes somebody or after a play or whatever. Being a tough guy is doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, how you're supposed to do it, and where you're supposed to do it at every single day. And if they can do that, then they're going to improve. They're going to reach their genetic potential as best they can. And really, that's all, that's all we can ask for. And just see how it goes. From the rest of the groups, is that something you guys have always done? Is it only because of the the size of it this year? No, we we, we always do, but um, we start integrating them a little bit faster based on their fitness levels. This year, I just felt we got to keep this group together because I mean, you got fifty. You're, you're putting fourteen or fifteen guys right into spring football, like. So I just want to make sure when it's time for them to go in, they're ready to be integrated with the rest of the team. I guess by having them separate, what do you feel like that allows you and your staff to do with them to? Helping. Spend more time on technique, spend more time on uh, coachability, spend more time on uh, teaching, not just technique, but teaching of, you know, taking care of your body, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, uh, the importance of this exercise as opposed to this exercise, where you need to be in five weeks, where you need to be in four weeks. And when you have your older players, it's just, it's, it's kind of like chaotic, so you really can't do that because you're kind of focused on something else. Now you can put all your lasers right onto those young guys and get them going. And it's fun, too, to have those guys separate because you can kind of, like, you guys all understand recruiting and, and the things that happen in recruiting. And, you know, everybody's got to be nice to everybody. Like, you know, I don't have to be nice to anybody. So, <laughs> you know, um, some of the things that I had to go through when, when they're on campus recruiting and all the fun stuff, and, like, now it's real. So I can... I go back again. I go back to history. So, um, Master Teague's a guy who's got a lot of eyes on him this off season. Just, I guess, how are you approaching what he has to? I mean, he's a guy like. He, I mean, there's nobody. I should say no one, but there, there's very few out there that are physically fit like he is. I mean, he is. But he's got to be. He's got to kind of take. He's got to take the leadership role like J.K. did. And you want to talk about? He, he's very quiet. J.K.'s outgoing. Master is the complete opposite. So. Masters really got to take that on his um, and, and, the, and the unit. They got to really work on that, and that's hard. That's the, the most difficult thing other than the physical stuff that these players do is getting them out of their comfort zone when it comes time to be a leader or where they have to, you know, again, be felt, seen, and heard. Like, because once you jump over that river, you can't go back. Like, you can't go back. So if you're, you know, if you really – worked hard, you've really been felt by your teammates, and now you're heard by your teammates, and you're doing everything the way you're supposed to do it, you jump over, I tell them, you jump over that river, you can't go back. Like a barrier goes up, you can't. Like Frogger, remember, once Frogger gets that one side, you can't go back. And the, all, all the things disappear. So that's, the, I, I always gotta give them a visual of like going through, and it's really cold water, and you might get frostbite, and hypothermia, and all that stuff, so. Is the sky the limit for Zach Harrison? Harrison? I'm sorry? Is the sky the limit for Zach Harrison? What do you see different about him from? See, here's another guy. Like, uh, a quick story on Zach. When he was recruited, I'm like, what are we doing? He was so quiet. He didn't want to talk. He wouldn't look you in your eye. It was so awkward. I'm like, are you? There's no way. I don't care if he runs a 21, two, 200 meter with no cleats on. Doesn't, like, what are we doing? And it's weird. Like, the first day he was here, it was completely the opposite I'm like Zach well why were you like that in recruiting he's like I hated it I didn't want to talk he's he now he's the, he's he's like uh JK like you see him you feel him and you hear him you do all those things yeah he's he's got he's got his ceilings pretty high he's got that high basement ceiling and sometimes you go in those basements they're real low like <laughs> houses that were built before 1980 like he's got that 12 foot Basement ceiling. He's got a high ceiling. Like Chase ceiling, Bosa ceiling. He's pretty talented, so we'll see. It's early.
Go ahead, Bill. Last question over here. Nick, I was just wondering uh, how many guys in your career you've worked with who are built like DeWan Jones and what it's like <laughs> to, to get one of the None. Zero. I, I take it back. Well, I had one. When I was back when I was an assistant at West Virginia, we had a kid by the name of Johnny Ray. He was six foot ten, three fifty. So he's a little shorter than Johnny, but he's bigger. He. Like oh, that? I love him. I just he's he's a he's a great kid. He smiles all the time. And even when you're trying to like coach him really hard, ah, he just looks at you and like smiles. Like it's good coach, and he's so tall. And the best thing is when he's with our nutritionist. You know, Kayla's like. She's she's not very tall, and he's super tall, and he follows her around because he's he does exactly what she tells him to. So we got to be creative and keep just keeping his weight down. So he's he likes basketball. So I told him I'll get one of our interns to feed him basketball. He could do jump shots for like two hours in a row and see how much he can sweat. And, what is so. the target for him? Like what 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 is the weight? Y'all? He's not he, his his body fat's not real high, so yeah. it's. And just don't want to get it. He doesn't need to weigh anymore. He just needs to be able to. Bend and get strong. The reverse of that is is uh, Nick Petit Frere. How's the bulking up going? Yeah, he's doing good. He's over 300 pounds. He's doing good. Nick, yeah. thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, 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 Th